let's, let's dive into His Word. Father, we thank You that Your Word is alive and active and living. God, let it be live and active and living in me, in us, and each other today. Father, we thank You for it. God, in Jesus' name, Amen. And Andre, if you could give me the blue screen. Thank, thank you, sir. And by the way, I want to give this, you know, there's various ways that the Lord gives you if you give a message in a, in a Bible study or wherever. And I, I love the journey of having, coming up with, with God's messages. And, you know, typically with me, I'll get, uh, you know, just uh, a snippet that the Lord gives me, like a phrase out of my Bible reading typically in the morning. And I'll just, I'll jot down those notes. I'll, I'll just capture that little insight while I've got it and I'll put it down. And usually I take about three or four, two or three weeks just to go through the process. I put it in the crock pot and just come back and check on it every time again. Just, and then just come back and just fill it out the week. Speaking, it's really, it's a fun journey because God's Word is alive and active and living. It's, it's not just a book. It's a living oracle of God, a statement of God's love and goodness and wisdom to each one of us every day. And so... You know, I had a message that uh, Friday morning I, I began to sit down and just to start to flesh that out. And so Friday morning I start reading through my Bible and like what, what I'm reading Friday morning is like, whoa, this is so good. So I start, I, I start writing all that down and I'm, I'm going to speak on that this because this, it's just so fresh and alive. So I was starting to work on this revised message. And then I woke up yesterday and I opened up my Bible to just the regular place. That I, that's the next place in my my Bible sequence, and I start reading that, and it just illuminated. So I said, well, I'm going to do that tomorrow. So you get what the Lord gave me yesterday, because God's Word is alive and active and living. Have I said that? And wants to speak to you and I today. What do I say today? We're not, none of us are here by accident, even me, because God wants to speak to each one of us today. So we're, part, and by the way, not only with what I was reading yesterday, but part of the way that this dream, that this message came from is a dream that I have. I, very, I have maybe a half a dozen times a year where the Lord speaks to me by a dream and said, I'm not sure what God is saying, but I know he's speaking to me in this dream. And a few weeks ago, I had a dream. And by the way, my background is in construction. You know, my dad was a contractor. I've been working construction all my, all my adult life. And God, how many of us know God often speaks to us in terms we can understand? <laughs> when He lived in an agrarian society, what did He talk to them a lot about in their parables? What farmers do. Why? Because they were farmers. You know, Jesus didn't talk a whole lot about, make parables about computer programmers back then, right? Because they had no way to relate to that. He, spoke, he often speaks to us out of our own experience. So I have a, you know, I've been around, I started going to job sites with my dad when I was, you know, so I've been around, so the Lord speaks to me sometimes out of that world that I'm familiar with. But what I saw in this dream was like a concrete mixer. And, you know, a concrete mixer is, is a truck that has something that's, you know, not it, it, its potential. You know, it's when it gets to its destination, it's going to make something that's strong and endurable and fulfills the design for what it was created for, Right. But it's a work in progress at that point. The drum is going around because the concrete is inside the truck. But this truck stopped, and it was a red truck. I don't know why it was red. And the door opened up, and there was two words on, on, the, on the door of this truck. Now, typically, it'd be like Jones and Sons, you know, trucking or whatever. Uh, and the two words on this truck door were wisdom and revelation. But God was saying... There is potential in this truck to be able to get it to the place that I intended to be able to pour it to make something endurable that people can live in, and it's going to take wisdom and revelation for what's in this truck, this potential that's in the truck, to be able to do what I've designed it to do. You know what that makes me want to do? I want to go back and look at what the Word says about wisdom and revelation. And so that was such a, you know, when God can make things clear even to me. So when you see these two words, wisdom and revelation, you want to say, Lord, let's go down that path together. Take, I'm, going to, I'm going to just grab your hand. You lead me where you want to go with this. Now, here's a starting point that I want to give. is Ephesians 1. This is Paul in his prayer, very powerful prayer to the Ephesian church. And he says, I, don't, I will not cease to give thanks to you, making mention of our prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you the spirit of wisdom 
and revelation. Now, if it had stopped and said, give you the spirit of wisdom, would that have been good? The answer would be yes, but that's not the end of the prayer. God apparently knows that we need both. We need wisdom. And would you finish with me? And revelation. And let me just show you something. We're told, I believe it's in Isaiah 40, I'm going from memory here, that every word of God is tested. Every word in every Scripture of all 31,000, however many verses there are, uh, God, every word is tested. Even the word and there. He, he, that Paul had this prayer for wisdom and revelation. Even the word and is important there. The word and is the, is the Greek word 2532, and it means cumulative. That something that the sum of these two is greater than the sum of the parts. There's a synergy here when God puts His wisdom and revelation together. You just don't have a sack of wisdom and a sack of revelation. You have something that's stronger, more powerful, more uh, empowering than if you have wisdom and revelation together. Have I said, I want both. I want to be filled with the wisdom and revelation of God. Okay? Now... We're getting, by the way, and again, that's the, here's the word. It means the word and there is even important because it means cumulative. Okay? Now, let me just say that uh, we're, I'll make a quick point that at least in general terms that I believe we would all agree is scripturally true. Wisdom, where's our best source of wisdom? It's in a book. And we all know here's This is our best source of wisdom bar none. I mean, I, I'm reading... I don't know about you, I've got about six books, I'm about a third of the way through. Lord willing, I'll finish most of them, you know. And I love reading about all kinds of topics. And, but there's no book that I love. I, I, don't, I don't start my day with any other book but this one. This is, and I'm sure that's the way your, your life, it, you, you steer your life as well. And let me just say that I, I believe that the wisdom is absolutely fun, found, foundational to our Christian life. It's the most important thing that we can have. If we, if we only could have wisdom or revelation, we need wisdom. But God wants us to have both. Okay? And, but here is, a, I just want to remind ourselves of a couple very, very familiar verses about the power and the necessity of God's Word. Here is a very familiar uh, verse out of Joshua 1.8. This book of the law, now that's what it's called. This is referring actually to the Pentateuch, which would be the first five books of the Old Testament. But the way we would translate this as Christians today, he says, this Bible will not depart from my mouth, but I will meditate on it day and night. This is not just something I do over coffee in the morning. It's something we want to infuse everything about our day. You know, we have that tough circumstance where the boss comes in and says you didn't do this right or we just failed to math test or whatever. We want the meditation of this Word to infuse everything that we do all day long. Give us creativity. Give us ideas we've never thought of before. Give us a way to work with people that's just like, wow, that really worked out well. I bet God helped me with that. The answer is, yep, He sure did. Because if we meditate on it day and night, it will, we're promised it will bring us good success. You know, how many of us would like to have success in the Lord our God? at infusing the way we go through every day in our business, in our schools, whatever it is we do, in our, in our playing tennis, <laughs> whatever the case may be. We meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do the parts that we like. What does it say? That you may observe to do all. God, we're committed to do every or the fullness of our understanding of this Word. For then you will make your way prosperous. And this word prosperous has nothing to do with money or only very indirectly with money. It means being strong in the Lord and the power of His might. You'll have good success. So just an Old Testament reminder about how essential God's Word is. Here's a very familiar verse from the New Testament, which again just shows us how fundamental and fundamentally important God's Word is. 2 Timothy 2.15 Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and we would call the word of truth by the name the bible amen so i think we would all agree and we're preaching to the choir here that the the bible is our greatest sense our source of wisdom and it is absolutely fundamental to uh, everything we do in this christian life and, it, and like we said before the lord wants to he wants to add to that and bring revelation as as well 
So, uh, by the way, if uh, if if the if the if the Bible is the foundation, let me ask you this, and let me just give another quick example from my from my contracting life. I've been I've seen thousands of construction plans over the years. I've been to hundreds and hundreds of job sites. I've never seen a project that was designed to have a foundation and nothing built on it. I've never seen that before. Why? Because when people build a foundation, why did they build a foundation? To put on the foundation what the foundation is designed for. And I'm absolutely convinced that one of the things that God wants to put on the foundation of the Bible is a revelation of, of what he's speaking to us today. And so let's, let's go down this path for a second. You know, if we've just seen a verse about how, in the Old Testament, about how fundamentally important the Bible is, that's, here's one way that God can add to that out of Deuteronomy 13. And there's hundreds of, voice, of verses like this in the Old Testament. Here's where the Lord was speaking to Israel. Say, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments, period. That's not what it says. What does it say? And obey His voice. Now, in order to obey His voice, we have to do what? To hear it and listen and expect that God is going to speak to us. Amen? So that's, by the way, the there's almost 400 times with the phrase the Lord spoke, the Lord spoke, the Lord spoke. Most of the book of Isaiah, for example, is, and the Lord spoke to Isaiah in the year of King Uzziah and said, and then three chapters later, there's close quotes, and you start the next chapter, and it says, and the Spirit of the, and the, and the Lord spoke to Isaiah saying, quote, you open up new quotes, and there's three or four pages, because God loves to speak to His people. He loves to speak to you and I. He can do it through his book, and he also loves to speak directly to us. You know, I don't know of any... Anyway, the Lord gave a, a picture for, for uh, Dorothy today. I don't, th I don't think you can look up in the Bible and so say, where, where would that be? It's a... Because it's a, God is a God of wisdom and revelation. He speaks what's in his word, and he also speaks to us just directly. He gives us telegrams, love letters from heaven. So, here is a very familiar ver verse out of uh, uh, the, the New Testament, which again just shows that we need, as New, Christ, New Testament believers, we, we need the Bible. We need to show, study to show ourselves approved. And here's Jesus speaking to his di disciples and saying, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they will follow me. Now let me make a quick point on these two verses. It's certainly... It's certainly clear when God speaks to us that he, he has something for us to say and usually something for us to do. Amen? So, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they do what? They take what I've spoken to them and I give them a direction and if they've heard and taken in and embraced what I've said, they're, we're going to we're, we're follow Jesus in what He said. So, God's, we love when God speaks and we also need to embrace that he's probably going to tell us something to do. How many of us have the Lord has told us something to do we didn't want to do? I remember vividly in May of 1990 when we've been praying for who is, you know, the mess of the city of Alito for decades, you know, for, for years and years. And this person said, would you consider, you know, I'm on the phone, he, he asked me, would you consider being mayor and it's like, there was two or three things I realized immediately. One, God was speaking to me. One was God was giving me a direction to do something, and I could either choose to obey it or not. And number three, I really didn't want to be mayor, but I said, yes, Lord. Now, you, every one of our circumstances will be different. But when the Lord speaks to us, He probably has something. That may be, it may be something we're hoping He will tell us to do. But how many, when God wants to speak to us, and we need to prepare ourselves ahead of time to say, when God speaks to me and tells me something to do, Lord, I'm telling you right now, the answer is yes. And we're ready to follow you, because when you speak, you have something for us to do. How many of us want to hear from God? How many of us want to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation? Okay? It's the greatest way to live life. 
you know what, I can look back on my years as mayor and say, thank God you gave me that opportunity. Sometimes it was very difficult. Sometimes I had very long hours. But God, I'm grateful that you asked me to do something at the time I didn't feel like I was qualified to do, but you walked us all through that. You let us do this as a group. It's amazing what you did. Thank you. God knows what he's doing. God knows what to tell. God knows the wisdom that you and I need. He knows the revelation that each one of us needs. So just in quick summary of this, here's the Old Testament. Uh, you know, we can see that there is not only the law, but there's God's voice that permeates the Old Testament. In the New Testament, there's, we, here's two Greek words, that there's not only the logos, which is the word of God, which is, these are two Greek words, which is the word of God, which is true for everybody at every, every place in history, on every culture, every place on the globe. It's true for everybody all the time. And there's also the rhema word, which is like a telegram for you, you know. I, by the way, I tried to get several people to run for mayor after I was saying, you know what? God said, no. I'll tell them what they should do. You can pray for the next mayor, but just because that's what I told you to do isn't necessarily what I'm going to tell them to do. Because it's as individualized because God wants to give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen? Now, here's the context of a particular verse. I love this verse out of Isaiah 30 which we'll see is a rhema word for God. In fact, I, I love the package here. Obviously, Isaiah 30, 21 has been part of the Bible since Isaiah wrote it, you know, however many centuries, centuries ago. It's part of the Logos canon of the Old Testament. It's part, of the, it's part of a principle that's true for everybody all the time. But it's also a picture of how God wants to give each one of us individualized instruction with where we are. You know, I need that. We need that. We need wisdom and revelation, okay? Now, here's this verse in New King James. It says, Your ear shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it whenever you turn to the right hand or to the left. You know what? I need guidance. I want to be moving forward. If I get a little bit off one way or the other, I want the Holy Spirit to say, Let's get back on track here. Now. If I get a little off this way, I want the Holy Spirit to say, Let's, get, let's go... Let, let you see that center stripe. Let's let's go down the center stripe. I need that. We need that. And God has that revelation to help give us the course corrections that we need. And this will be whispered to, uh, you know, very very specifics. It may be, you know, knocks you were about to take this job, but I'm saying don't do that. Now we can't we can't look up. You know, should I should I take this job in the Bible? There's not a scripture there. What do we have to do? We have to hear from God. We have to have the revelation from God. Am I going to go to this college or that? We can't look up, you know, which college should I go to? We have to be able to hear from God to know his course correction for us because it's individualized for each one of us. And God says, that's what I love to do. I love to give you a spirit of wisdom, those truths that are true for everybody all the time that can be the foundational guiding principles for your life and i also like to speak to you individually to be able to direct each one of us for exactly what he has for us and your journey won't be exactly like mine you know amen so now i love the same verse here's the same verse out of new living translation which has a slightly different uh, emphasis to it your own ears will hear him i love that your own ears this is personal your own ears he's going to whisper to your own ears the direction that you need Right behind you. Isn't that great? Right behind you. That means close. God is close. God is right behind me and he's going to speak into my ears. God wants this to be very personalized and close for each one of us. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to go to the right or to the left. How many of us need that sometimes? I mean, there's options that we don't know, you know. I mean, whether it's a job to, you know, when I got, when I had job opportunities after I got kicked out of graduate school years and years ago. I hadn't found a job offer in six months, and then one day I got two job offers. I needed help to say whether to go to the right or the left. God said, go this direction. I can look back 35 years later and say, Lord, that's amazing. I, I worked in a company where it became a company family. The, the owner of the company was a very generous, honest, honest man. He became like a, a, a part of a patriarch of my family. He went to be with the Lord last year. We still have groups of, a group of employees that meet together in breakfast because the common bond we had because God told me to go to the right. 
back in February of 1980. I need that. But God wants to give each one of us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, things that are true for everybody all the time. And the things that are true for everybody all the time, we can say, you can say to me, you know, Knox, you really ought to consider this because this is true. For, you know, no matter what your circumstance, this is true. You need to do it this way because it's true. For, we need those principles. But God also wants to give us those things that are personal for you, personal for me. And we, we have to hear from God. We can, we can ask for wise counsel. But I love that God loves to communicate on both tracks. Now, let's, now, if we do, and I want to take just a minute. Now, this, is a, this would be a beautiful promise if all this was is that God would speak to us and help us as we're moving forward on Him to keep on track or to make the right choices. That would be awesome if that was the total sum of that promise. But God's just getting started because God gives us a blessing we can't over, over, it just overflows, right? God is really, really good. Let's take a look at some of the overflow blessings from being able to hear that voice that's right behind us. Say, God, thank you. That whisper, you're whispering in my ear. You're giving me understanding of what to do about this or what to do about that. Here's, here's, a, uh, here's the a following verse. He will give you the rain for your seed, which you sow on the ground, and the bread of the increase of the earth, it will be fat and plentiful, and that day your cattle will feed in large pastures. How many of us want spiritual rain? I mean, all through the Bible, there, there's agrarian pictures that sure talk about natural rain, but talk about more of Him. God is saying, if you will walk in being able to cultivate hearing my voice, and by the way, it's a lifelong exercise. Let me ask, has anybody besides me ever thought that they heard the Lord found it. Ooh, I didn't. I kind of missed that. You know, the Lord says, "I'm here to teach you." So it's a lifelong pursuit of just. And a lot of times, the Lord. I don't know about you, but the Lord usually speak, speaks to me in these little, little tiny nudges. I've got to be listening and attentive. And God says, "You want to learn how to sense those nudges?" Oh yes, Lord. He's there to try to. He wants. He wants to show us how to be able to recognize the still small voice or have he speaking to you but here one of the blessings that comes from this promise of god's direction because we can hear his spirit right behind us saying this is the way is rain and the result of this rain is increase plenty and large pastures god we want to have plenty how many of us want to have so much of god in our life that it just kind of naturally overflows to other people that's what God wants. He wants to fill the biblical word. This is an insight that Lynn brought us years ago. That one of the Hebrew words for hill, for fill that I believe is in Isaiah 6. God's definition of fill doesn't mean pour the glass, past half full, three quarters fill, not even up to the brim. It means you keep pouring so it's overflowing. That's what God, God wants to bring that into each one of our lives if we're hungered to hear his voice, which is right behind us. Amen? So that's one of the overflow blessings that comes from us being able to just hear his voice. Here, here's another one. Now, this is one of the, how many of us have scriptures that go, that's really, really good. I don't understand all that at all, but I know it's really good. Here's one. And again, we're just tracking right past, uh, uh, you know, the Hebrews 30, 21, or Isaiah 30, 21 was, the, was our starting point of this beautiful blessing that the Lord gives. Here's verse 26. Moreover, okay, this is, moreover means we've already just seen, the last one we've just seen is God wants to bring plenty, overflow, abundance into our lives. To honor Him and to be able to give away to others. Here's the next one, it says moreover. Everybody say moreover. You know, God has more. God always, if we're hungry for Him, He always has more for us. And so here's the moreover, and there, I, I love the beautiful redundancy of Scripture here. The light of the moon will be as the light of the sun now that's think about that for a second hmm okay just ponder that for a minute do i understand all of this no but i know it's good i know it's god is wanting to bring more okay moreover the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun will be sevenfold as the light of seven days i don't understand that but you know what i know it means God is going to give us more of His light. We're told in James 
Can we memorize the scripture together? Now, this would be a real, real challenge. Out of James, I'm sorry, I forget the exact verse. God is light. Now, is that, you know, I know as adults sometimes, that's so hard. Memorizing scripture is so hard. Here's a re Can we memorize this verse together? God is light. If he's saying, I want to give you more of myself, say, Lord, we want more. And by the way, we're living in a day where we desperately need all of the wisdom and revelation of God because we live in a day that I believe is literally, prophetically, right out of Isaiah 60 where deep darkness covers the earth. How many of us would agree there's, there's things going around in our world right now we never would have even fathomed could be happening? And you know what? There's an answer. There's always an answer for darkness. And what is it? God's light, okay? And the Lord has a beckoning, a promise saying to us, arise, shine, for your light has come. Now, I don't have any light at all, but you know what? There's a flashlight inside of me. And his, his name is Jesus. And God has once said in each one of us, arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you, for deep darkness covers the earth and deep darkness the people. And here we are. God wants a people. So let me, ask, let me just say this. Uh, one thing I can say, I don't understand this verse in many, many ways. I'm not sure how the moon can look be as bright as the sun. I'm not sure how the sun can be seven times brighter than it is, but I know spirit, figuratively, spiritually, the Lord says, I want to give you more of myself because we're living in a day when deep darkness covers the earth and the light that is in God's people is needed more than ever. If God is saying part one of the blessings that comes from this verse is saying being able to learn, hear enough from God's Word to be able to hear Him whisper behind us, not stay right down the center lines. And one of the blessings, the overflow blessings, is more of Him, more of His God's light. Says, Lord, fill me up, Lord. Amen? And that's the blessing for you and for me. And can we say there's, there's more? Here's the next one. We're just, we're just letting, we're letting Scripture just speak to us. Isaiah 30, 29. You shall have a song as in the night. How many of us love waking up sometimes just, you know, with a, with a song in your heart? Oh, I love that. I, I, I love sometimes going through the day and I just hear it's like, you know, I may be working in my computer, you know, and I, I'm like hearing in the background, you know, music's okay if you're on a, on a you know, elevator or something. But how many of us have had this where you're just like, like working at your... Uh, at your office or what or you do, and, and like in the background you're hearing something like, oh, oh. and God wants God wants to bring a song right in the midst of our life, be part of what our what our day is. Well, here's here's one of the other blessings of this Isaiah 30:21 uh, uh, promise is that He will bring a song as in the night when a holy festival. Now, if you have a holy festival, that's going to be a joyful time, right? We're about to have a holy festival on the other side of these partitions in a few minutes. We just rejoice together. And so God wants to bring joy, and the joy of the Lord, according to Nehemiah, makes us what? Strong. How many of us want more joy? I guarantee you the people at your office who don't know Jesus, they need your joy too. So God, fill us up with your joy. And it says, uh, joy and gladness of heart is one, go, one goes out with a flute. So... We've seen briefly, not only God has a, this revelation of Him, the spirit of wisdom and revelation of Isaiah 30, 21, that He wants to be able to be like right behind us, a voice saying, this is the way, walk you in it. But he, brings, he wants to bring on top of that abundance. He wants to bring on top of that a light that, that makes us better able to be salt and light for such a day as this and overflow us with joy. And the, here's the fourth one, and I love this. Isaiah 30, 30 says, the Lord will cause. That's a phrase I love in Scripture. Can we say it together? The Lord will cause. I love that. I, I, I want to try to position myself with every blessing. It says, the Lord will cause that. And so it says, the Lord will cause. And what, what is this promise? His glorious voice to be heard. I, I love that one, one of the, the fourth and final blessing that I want to bring up about walking in this promise of Isaiah 30, 21, is if we will embrace and say, Lord, train me in this promise about you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way you walk in it. We've already seen that it brings 
increase. It brings more light. It brings joy. And you know what it also brings? More of hearing from God. The more we steep ourselves and say, Lord, I want to know how to hear from you. You know what he says? I'm going to, make my, I'm going to cause my glorious voice to be heard in your life. You know, it reminds me of the verse in Matthew 25. It says, everyone who has and cultivates that and say, Lord, I want more. God says what? If you be faithful with what I've given you, what am I going to give you? I'm going to give you more. And so I love this promise. And again, this is all in the context of wisdom and revelation. Now, I just want to wrap this up by saying uh, I tell you what, well, I think we'll, I think we'll stop here today and I may, may, may share these, the rest of these thoughts later. But let's, let's thank God for this promise. Father, we just are grateful. God, that you've given us this promise, God, that you will, you will speak into our lives, Father. God, let your kingdom come, God. God, we want, let your will be done. God, we want to hear from your voice, God. We want to just immerse us in your Bible, Father. God, let us be, just have a greater hunger to wake up and start our day with opening up the book to where we where we finished the day before and say, God, speak to me out of your word today, God. God, give us, give me your wisdom, God. We need that. I need that. But God, we just pray that you would also, God, just cultivate our ear where we can hear that voice that's right behind us speaking to us personally, telling us things that are just individualized for us. That's a revelation for us about whether we go to the right or to the left. God, it's like a telegram for heaven for each one of us. So God, we just pray the way we looked at Paul. God, we ask that you would give each one of us a spirit of wisdom and your revelation. God, put the synergy of those two together God, make it, make it more like us, God, that not only is our life full of You, but You'll give us an abundance of fruitfulness, abundance of Your light, abundance of Your joy and strength to be able to give away to people all around us. We look for opportunities to do that this week. We thank You for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen.